shout unto the Lord uh, with a voice of a, a triumph. But I, I don't feel like victory's at hand. Call those things which be not as though they come are. On, come on, come on. I said shout unto the Lord.
Jesus. Follow Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You don't feel excited about that? Your wood is wet. Hallelujah. Well, talk about getting excited. Uh, Bishop and Pastor and their whole wonderful team here has given of themselves to come today because we need to get up to the next level. How many? That's exactly what we've been talking about the last seven weeks, isn't it? Next level living. And they're kind of coming. You know, what? do you ever have when you're trying to get up over a fence and you were young and you did this with your hands? Say, put your foot here. Did anybody ever do that? Say, put your, put your foot here. I'll hoist you up. He's coming to hoist us up to the next level. How many are ready to go to that next level? Would you please give a Fort Myers Christian Outreach Center welcome to Bishop Rick Thomas this morning. Shout unto the Lord oh, with a voice of a, a triumph. But I, I don't feel like victory's at hand. Call those things which be not as though they come are. On, come on, come on. I said, shout unto the Lord. that is physical but there is a sound that we physically make yeah. into God yeah. I'm going to talk about that in a few moments but when we begin as a collective group of people to shout yeah. in one mind in one heart in one spirit yeah. it sends a directive into the heavens yeah. now picture this we got churches across America Standing up, sitting down, and praying. Across America, coming in and singing, there, nothing wrong with it, but singing their hymnals. They're not going to clap their hands. They're not going to smile. They're going to act holy. They're going to play their, their organ and make it sound like it's a, a horror show. They're going to go into church one way, and they're going to come back out the same way they came in. But God's doing a new thing in this world today. And it's not the same as was yesterday. It's not what was. I'm going to tell you something. It's not even what is. Yeah, it's what's it, going to be. It. I got news for you. I can't worry about yesterday. And to be honest with you, I don't care about today. Because I know where my tomorrow is taking me. I'm so caught up with my future, I don't have time to deal with this stuff. Oh, come on, tell somebody, it's time to smile. Come on, tell them it's time to smile. It's time to shout. It's time to make a joyful noise. It's a sound of victory, of jubilee in the house today. There is a sound that you will be waiting to hear the sound the sound that you yeah will use Lord, to break your yeah. people through so we lift so we lift up our
they would begin to praise God for what he'd done with the offering. The sound they made with their praise was found in the tithe that they presented. See, some of you still don't get the tithe. Y'all come up here, I love you. You're making a sound up here, folks. You need to get excited. You don't walk up and go. No. God, here's my tithe. When does heaven open? Revelation, I need to see. I, I need something today. I need to hear your voice and know your ways. I, I need to hear from you today. But I don't do that. I'm... Anybody who does that, if you will write a check for $100,000, I will have no problem with you. Say, why do you keep going to 100000 I don't know why. It's the third time. That means somebody here, God has talked to you about giving $100,000. And you don't even have it. But you know God has spoken to you about it. How am I going to get it? Who cares? Just start making sounds. Pentecost, it is a day of prayer. It is a day of praise. It's a day of presentation. Prayer, praise, and presentation. Prayer, praise, and presentation, watch this now, releases the presence, the power, and the passion of God. Prayer, praise, presentation releases the power, the passion, purpose of God in your life. Think about it. If I want God in my life, I'm going to acknowledge Him with my prayer, praise, and pr I'm going to make a sound. I said, I'm going to make a sound. And when they kept brought the prayer, praise, and presentation, the purpose, the power, and the passion of God was released upon every one of them that were there. I said, not just some of them. Now, isn't it unique? Now, stay with me a minute. Isn't it unique? That group, the early church, is the only church that we've seen since the beginning of the church that did not have one need that wasn't met in the early days of the church. You know why? It was the sound they were making. The sound. I said, what are you saying to me? Fort Myers Christian Center needs to make a different sound. You've been given to every ministry you can give to. I know you have. I've been here. I, last time I was here, it was $100,000, I think, y'all were able to raise. Needed it. But folks, I'm going to tell you something. I want you to think with me. I want you to put on a different thinking cap today. Why don't you make a sound for yourself? What is your destiny worth? What is your future worth? How old are you, sir? How old are you? Your age. What is your age? 84. Caleb was 85. You got a year to go before you get started. You laugh at that, don't you? I don't. Colonel Sanders can be, become a multimillionaire because he's almost 70 years old because he had an idea. Amen. An idea, a concept, a strategy. But they don't come to you because you sit down and speak in tongues. I'm about to mess some of you up. They do not come to you because you have the eldership lay hands on you. They don't come to you because you fall out under the Spirit. I'm not against any of that. They don't come to you because you sing songs of praise. I'm going to really mess some of you up. There's one sound that God says, I cannot not respond to. That's the sound of the seed. And God made a sound with his seed, for he said, let there be. And when he sowed the seed of the sound of his word, creation took place. 
When he gave his son Jesus and we received Jesus, we make a sound. It's called repentance. And God responds. And as many as receive Jesus, he gives them the power to become the sons of God. God does nothing outside of a seed. A seed makes the loudest sound to the kingdom of God that anyone can ever make. And God reports to that sound every time because he said, I shall not be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, whatsoever sound a man makes with his seed, he said, I will respond and they will not be weary in well-doing for they shall reap where they've sown and due season they shall have that which their sound has made. Oh, some of you still don't get this. The sound of a seed. Prove me herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven. Why? Because you have returned to me in what? Tithe and offering. Wow. Pentecost. Tithe and offering. A sound. Open the windows of heaven. Of course, all of us, you've heard me here years ago teach on this. We see God up there with a little picture and he's got the windows open. He's pouring me out a blessing. Oh, they look like a blessed people. They look like they need a little blessing today. I think I'm going to give you a little blessing here. Pour you something out. Come on, get your cup. That's not what the text says. He says, I'll open the windows of heaven. You don't pour things out a window. Windows are for seeing. It's for revelatory insight. I'll open you the windows of heaven. Pour you out a blessing. In the original Hebrew says this. I will decree what you've seen as so. Yes. So when I bring my tithe and offering and I'm making my sound, I want God to show me what I've never seen. And when I see it, then he says, because of the sound I made with my tithe and offering, he will begin to declare what I've seen as so. It, watch this now. I will declare it that it's so. In such a dimension you cannot contain. What? You can't hardly in the natural believe what I'm showing you. <laughs> My God. Then I'll rebuke the devourer. I'm a tither. He rebukes the devourer. Lost my home, but he rebukes the devourer. Sick in body, but he rebukes the devourer. The kids aren't saved, but he rebukes the devourer. That don't sound like rebuke to me. See, again, we're messed up, church. Rebuke the devourer is off of what you've seen. Not just off of your life in general, but over the revelation you have. Well, I don't know about that, but let me help you with that. God turned our life around when God showed us the, the, the spirit, familiar spirit of poverty that my grandfather had led into our family. That's another story altogether. But on, when the crash took place, he lost everything, came home and said that we've lost everything, we'll never get it back. Our family is destined for poverty. And every one of my, bro my father's brothers and sisters, all my uncles and aunts, they all died sick and they all died broke. My grandfather died sick, he died broke. And all of a sudden God showed me that one day. I got with my brother, I got with my dad. We broke that thing because we had a revelation. We made a sound and God showed us something about poverty. He didn't show us till we sowed the seed. But when I sowed the seed and made the sound, he began to show me what I'd never seen before. And we took authority over that thing. Now watch this. The cause of that, 30 years later, I've never been without. Hear what I'm saying? I'm not boasting on me. I'm boasting on God. My kids have never been without. My father died rich. All my brothers were blessed beyond measure and worth well over millions of dollars. I said, I know how to make the sound. It's not always easy making the sound. But we know when we have a need in our lives, where do we sow our seed? When we get, where, where do I put this thing? I've got to put it someplace that I'm making a sound to God. And here's what we found out. When we give the seed and make the sound, if it's in a place that God has put his hand upon Oh, God, help me. We 
we gave $10,000 here several years ago. God has so blessed my wife and I because we came to this house and gave $10,000 because of the anointing that's in the soil of this house. People say, I don't understand. There's a lot of ministers who don't live like you. I know. There's a lot of ministers that, that don't have what you've got. I know. There's a lot of ministers, you know, you're kind of flashy. I know. <laughs> hey, you got it, show it. Aren't you afraid what people think? They talk about me anyway. So if they can talk about me, I might as well enjoy it. The only person that can destroy the seed in your life is you. And so the enemy wants you to dig up what you've sown. And the master said, leave it alone, let it come up together. We'll bring in the harvest and then we'll separate it. Because the enemy, once you put your seed in, if you won't dig it up, he can't either. Yeah. It is the law. Isn't that funny? What the enemy wants you to do is sow a seed. Come back three weeks later and say, Pastor Lynn, this thing don't work. But what about six months later? What about a year later? I've got seeds coming up in my life right now that I sowed 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. I'll find myself in a situation and say, God, this is so cool. I can't believe it's happening to me. He'll, he'll take me back and say, remember when you sowed that seed there? That's what I was setting up here. I was in Thailand in the jungles in the backwoods where nobody would go and maybe that's why God opened the door for me in Colombia where there's thousands of people Amen. oh maybe that's why he opened the door for me now that they've asked me to go to Brazil that my book is now my books are now hitting Brazil and they want me to come over and speak to crowds of 40 50,000 people maybe it was because I was in Thailand speaking to four and five Aka tribe people spending four hours a day teaching four and five people the Word of God in Thailand in 1986 and 87 and 88 and 89 and 90 Maybe it was when I went to those places and nobody else would that now God's taking me before the 20 to 30 and the 40 and the 50,000 crowd because I made a sound in 1986. It wasn't real loud. Yeah. But God heard it. And he didn't just give me back what I had. He doubled. He is jealous for you. He loves like a hurricane. And I am a tree. Bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. I, I don't know where you've been. And all of a sudden, I'm unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory.